Imagine a world where you can work less and focus on what brings you joy in life. A world where burnout is a thing of the past. Well, our friends over at Uncut Gems have the perfect video editing solution for you. Say goodbye to time-consuming, creatively draining, sleepless editing nights, and hello to cost-effective peace of mind. With Uncut Gems, your videos aren't just outsourced, they're elevated. Through their easy-to-use video editing service, you can save money without compromising quality and receive the most important treasure of all, your time. And right now they are offering all of our listeners 75% off on your first order. So head over to uncutgems.com and use code wayward75 at checkout so that you can kick that backlog in the face and get back to being excited about your business. Welcome back to the Films We Make podcast. Today I'm sitting down with Luke and Christiana from Light Cannon Films, two talented filmmakers and business owners who have gone from the small town wedding lifestyle to traveling the world and shooting next level celebrity weddings. People like Taylor Lautner, Bobby Bones, couples from The Bachelor in Paradise, just to name a few. Today we're gonna hear more about their process, what really helped them transform their business, and what it's like behind the lens at a celebrity wedding. All of that and more is in store for this episode, so I hope you stick around to the very end. And without further ado, let's get right into it. Luke, Christiana, thank you both so much for joining us on the Films We Make podcast today. Uh, for those that don't know you, I would love to just kind of start with some introductions here. Um, tell everyone who you are, you know, the artist behind Light Cannon, and how you got started in the industry. Go ahead, take um, it Well, thank you for having us, Jared. Um, Luke was the original cinematographer behind Light Cannon Films. He already had the name and the I think the LLC, and he had filmed a few weddings by the time I met him, which was back in college, and um, did not really consider it to be a full-time job until he graduated, and then I don't remember if it was your idea or mine. It was kind of both of our idea, but we kind of just realized we had this sitting in our lap, so he started um, taking it more seriously, but I was still not that invested. I was teaching art. And, um, not, I didn't like have any experience. Yeah. Bank stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Just doing all these things. And I didn't have any experience with cameras or editing or anything. That was all him. And I think it wasn't until I got engaged until we got engaged that I got really excited. Yeah. She, she became my boss. <laughs> yeah. She took it over. Well, I, started to, I had watched like, him doing it so much at this point. I started to have opinions, you know, I was looking over his shoulder and I was like, no, 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 change this. And, you know, so her I, opinions were good too. Like I noticed when she started critiquing my work, I'm like, this isn't, this, these are really good critiques. Like I didn't think anybody would notice that. So Christiana, and she does have experience. We, you know, she ran the family video camera back in the day yeah. when she was a kid. So yeah, yeah. So um, I, I did have a few years of experience. Um, but yeah, so then I think when I feel like when we really took off was when we joined forces, not to say that he was already very talented, but I think that we just sort of created a complete team. You know what I mean? Yeah. 100%. And so now he does all the filming and I do the editing or I do a lot of the editing. I kind of get the highlight films started. I like piece them together and pick the music and the B roll and everything. And then Luke kind of comes behind and smooths everything over. But uh, yeah, I, we definitely have a big hand at both. This is what we do full time. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And so what year was it that, Y'all kind of like joined for forces. Um, well, so we went to, um, it w I think it was 2015, right? It was probably 2015. Yeah. We went to WPPI and that was our first like wedding conference, um, out in Vegas. They do it every year. And it is, I think what Christiana really needed to like yeah. realize that, Oh, like I can, like I have a role in this business. Yeah. Like, and she took on, Parts of like, you know, we wear, you know how it is, but you wear so many hats, you know, you're right. doing marketing and like, um, editing and shooting and filming. And there's just, uh, then networking and it's like, it's hard for like one person to do it all. And Christiana happened to wear all the hats I wasn't good at. And I wore all the hats that she wasn't good at. So I think naturally, um, we were just a pretty good team, but that's probably when we joined forces was, was after WPBI when, yeah. when she realized that like, 
okay, these are my roles I'm going to take on. I think that's when, yeah, I would say that I was like all really all in. We got married in 2014. And then 2015 WPBI was like, I had a vision suddenly for what my job was. So that was really motivating. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, and has it always been like Canon? Like Luke, when you started, is that the name that you came mm-hmm. up with? Yeah, it's like you can come up with a couple different like names. I didn't want to. I I don't want it to be like you know Luke Brown videography because a my name's kind of boring. And okay, but I have to say um, the word light and light cannon is inspired by the meaning of Luke's name. So it's, he he likes to downplay that. Oh yeah, I just kind of picked it. I was like, well, you you did put some thought into it, and I I happen to like it. So that worked out well because I'm pretty opinionated. People do around town call me Luke Cannon. They think yeah. sometimes Cannon's my last name. Hey, you're Luke Cannon? I'm like, no. I love that though. Yeah, I love like names that actually have like intention and, and meaning behind them. And no, I am the same way. I mean, I knew that I couldn't. I started with my name and I was like, this it was just so cheesy. It was just like my middle name is Lee. So I was like Jared Lee <laughs> videography. I was like, why is my name rhyming here? This we need to we need to get that out of here. I don't Jared I don't like Lee it. Videography. It sounds good though. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, eh. yeah, I just, it didn't fit. It didn't feel like me. So no, yeah. I love that. Um, no, I love that, you know, there's a dynamic between you two and like you each have roles. And um, I know personally, I'm kind of like the solo entrepreneur, so I can't really speak on the experience of it. But yeah, I'd love to hear more about what that dynamic looks like, you know, working with your spouse in the industry and um, yeah, how you guys balance that workflow. I would say surprisingly, it's that's kind of the easy part of our relationship is, is work. When we get into work mode, um, well, f- first of all, most of the time we're not both working at the same time. We have three beautiful, wild children. And that yeah, that is the hard <laughs> job. <laughs> right. And so we're constantly in a relay of like, okay, you have the kids until 11 and then we'll ha- hop on this call and, you know, we're back and forth. So we rarely ever work at the same time. So we're constantly leaving each other like, lists and notes and texts and things like that. So it's, it's pretty, um, it's nonstop. Um, but when we actually get to work together, we have so much fun. I feel like that's the, the easy part is when we're in the same room and we're like bouncing ideas off of each other. Like, can you take a look at this edit? You know, what do you think of this song? Or what do you think we should say to this part, you know, planner or whatever? Like it's, it's so nice to have another person. And honestly, I think it sounds way harder to do it alone, you know? People ask a lot if it's hard to work with your spouse. I'm like, it's that is not has never been a problem for us. <laughs> yeah, I think we both. I think the biggest thing is we both trust each other. Like, mm-hmm. I have like fully given up like my roles to um, where Christiana's strength strengths lie, and I just trust that she with her like she's confident about you know certain aspect, and she's like, no, we need to you know not post that on social media and post this instead. That's just not people aren't going to want to watch that. Or she's going to say something like, no, the shot isn't going to like work in the film. Like the bride's not going to find that flattering or whatever it is, you know, but, um, or if it's like an email to a client, like at the end of the day, I think because I trust her, I can like, let go of that. And I think it's the same for her, you know? Um, but I, you know, and people do say it's really hard to work with your, with your spouse, but they're probably like, I don't know, maybe fighting over the same topic, not wanting to like let go of it. But. Yeah, I think the the great thing about us is that we have a sort of opposite strengths. So that just balances mm-hmm. really well. Yeah, that's that's really awesome to hear. I know, I mean, for me, being a solopreneur, like you said, I mean, it's like, yeah, it's really hard because you wear multiple hats and you're trying to do everything. And um, mm-hmm. yeah, you can only really, you know, serve every aspect so well if you're, you know, giving yeah. all your attention to that. And so- yeah, I would say for me, the letting go thing makes so much sense um, for people who maybe struggle. Because I mean, being solo, it's like delegating tasks and trying to outsource. It's like, I don't know why there's like this, this weird pull like towards I don't oh. want to let that go. Oh, yeah, I struggle but, with that so bad. Luke is good. Yeah. about that. Are you a perfectionist? Yes. I mean, I, it's it's one of those things where I'm, I sit over a film for like, maybe three, four months. And it's like, I have to go back and, you know, just like sit with it and revisit it. And just, it's just the constant back and forth. I'm never like content. with. Do you have someone, do you have like a friend or someone that you send films to that provides feedback? 
Um, I do. Um, I have a few friends that I'll like, you know, send some films. I'll even, I mean, my girlfriend too. I'll, I, I'll let her look at it. It's like, Hey, like, what's like, is there anything missing here? Like what's, what do I need what's to do? Happen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. And sometimes, I mean, like I, if I send it to her, she's like, she's just so supportive though. She's like, Oh my God, it's just too supportive. <laughs> too supportive. I'm like, no, I need you to there be like, yeah. <laughs> tell me like the truth here. Yeah. yeah it's so. hard. It's hard to be a perfectionist in this industry because I mean, on one hand, like we want to give, you know, we, at the end of the day, we're giving our clients like videos and films that we believe in, you know, yeah. films that we would are like happy with, happy yeah. with everyone seeing. Yeah. But even I could pick any one of my wedding films and watch it. And yeah. Be like, it's never done. Oh man. No, I want to change that. Yeah. Oh, there's this, and, you know, it's like at the end of the day, I have to, I think that me not being a perfectionist is a good thing. Um, but Hopefully our films are still good. <laughs> okay, listen, not being a perfectionist is great when it comes to the art right. of, a, of a business, but when it comes to the organization of a business, we're both not organized people. So that is one thing that we kind of need a third person to come in and like... Yeah. <sighs> Just manage, yeah. Things up, but that's the hard part for right. us. Right. No, I, I totally get that. I really do. And uh, just kind of transitioning into... Um, the next thing, you know, I first stumbled upon like your work in 2015, like I mentioned before. And I remember thinking, I just love that you were both from like NC. I just thought that was so cool. And, um, from the outside looking in, I know you said you're not organized, but I looked at your business and thought, oh, they have their life, their business together. Like it all looks uh, amazing. Wow, wow. Thank um, you. <laughs> and so, well, yeah, coming from someone who was like, just getting started, I was like, yes, this is like so professional. It's so like, just it looks so good. And so, I mean, that was like eight years ago. And, um, you know, I remember like watching a lot of your films and a lot of them were like local to the area. Um, but now like, you know, eight years later, you look at your work and you're doing these like amazing, like luxury celebrity weddings, just crushing it. And so I'm so interested, like, what did that transition look like? Was there like a specific moment in your career that put things into motion or any strategies that really helped transform the business? Yeah, I think, well, I would, I would start off by saying that um, it's a little bit, it was a little bit of just luck combined with us working hard. Like it, it's luck. It's definitely, you could luck. like work hard and never like get certain weddings, but then you need that luck aspect, which is what we had. And, you know, we, we have a friend who was in the wedding industry, you know, started when we did as a wedding planner and, uh, I was always reaching out to him for years, you know, Hey, let me come do a wedding with you. Let me come do a wedding with you. His work looked amazing. And finally, like the first wedding he referred us to was uh, Chris and Lauren Lane's wedding. And that is like, um, you know, he, he threw our name out there and, and she ended up going with us. And that was, I think like the first, I mean, we were so excited about that. Yeah, we were. And that I was the first where we were when we found out about it. <laughs> that was like the first time when we realized like, Oh, there's like, you know, opportunities this is to attainable. get yeah. outside of yeah. Wilmington and, yeah. and to do these bigger weddings. But it, it just kind of started with just knowing somebody and just being lucky. I guess. And something I always say is that we've grown really organically. Like we started off like just not getting paid very much. And then, you know, it's just like every year we've just built a little and we've been really patient and really focused. Mm -hmm. And we've had to like cut things. We tried to do commercials for a while and we're like, no, we need to just only be good at weddings. And try to do associate teams for a while. Yeah. Like, what would that look like? We've just, it's taken us a while to like figure out what our strengths are, what our style is. Um, and we're still figuring it out too. You know, it's not like you ever reach a point where you're done, but um, right. I think one of the best things that we've done is focus Yeah. and not get distracted or excited. Cause sometimes it is exciting when someone reaches out and it's like, Oh, I want to make, I want you guys to do a music video or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you just have to. We definitely it. tried it. Like we definitely. Yeah, we did. We would, but... we would do it for like a month or two, and we'd be like, "Okay, no, we got it. We got to stay focused here." Yeah. And it, it, it did take us a while to figure that out. Yeah. But, um, um, yeah. So I think that was the the foundation for many years. Like we, you know, it wasn't very visible progress, but we were still excited about like the things that we were excited about each year. You know, like our big wedding of that year was like, oh, it's going to be in Charleston. You know, like this is our big one. And then yeah. next was like um, our first Indian wedding. We were so excited about that. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like every year it's been something new that we're like, 
okay, this is the year that we're going to do this. And then, you know, it just, it grows, but it was very, a very natural progression. Yeah. I love that. It's, it's, you know, you guys are staying true to who you are as artists opposed from just doing other things in your business just for the sake of, you know, profiting, I guess, so to speak, or, you know, scaling in different ways or differentiating and you're like niching specifically into weddings. And, uh, I know I kind of went down that rabbit hole too. I was like, well, I'm a filmmaker. I should be doing other things in filmmaking. Work. I mean, there's tons of money to be made. Yeah. Right. And more money, not doing weddings, but yeah, no, absolutely. And, but I think, you know, obviously you can still do really well, just obviously in the wedding industry. Um, as, as long as you're just like, like you, like you said, you're focused and you're yeah. putting the hard work and that discipline towards, you yeah. know, what your goals are. And, you know, you mentioned too, um, no, like kind of like your first celebrity wedding uh, or celebrity was Chris Lane. And he's actually from North Carolina, isn't he? Yeah, was, I, well, they live in yeah. Nashville. It was kind of a coincidence, but yeah, he's from Kernersville. The wedding was in Nashville and my second shooter was like, Hey, I went to high school like they wanted like the same high school. Like yeah. my second shooter is like tying Chris Lane's bow tie, and he's like, "Wait a minute, that's the high school? Yeah, my like grandpa is like the gym's named after him. <laughs> like, like he was like coach Chris Lane. I don't know. It's it was just a really weird experience, yeah. but that was fun. Yeah, it is yeah. a small world. That's that's wild. Yeah, I have a, a friend who actually films like one of Chris Lane's like earliest music videos. Oh um, really? Yeah, before he got like his his start into country music and and everything. So that's. I just, I don't know him personally. I just, I have a friend that has like obviously worked with him too, but. Um, yeah. We've been yeah, really was... lucky too with everyone that we've worked with, even like the celebrity, you know, we haven't filmed any like huge celebrities, but so it feels kind of funny saying that, but everyone has been so nice and so down to earth. So I feel like we've mm-hmm. had a really good taste of the celebrity market too. You know, we haven't. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess from that one experience with Chris Lane and like having a friend that, um, you know, kind of connected those dots. I mean, how has like networking, I guess, evolved and collaborations, um, you know, played, has, has that played like really a pivotal role, would you say, in like elevating to this next level? Um, yeah, a little bit. I mean, people definitely, at first, you know, some, I'd say other people in the wedding industry sometimes when they've done like a a celebrity wedding or, you know, uh, sometimes it's just like, it doesn't affect you at all. It's just like, Oh, that's cool. You've done that. That's cool. Like it's, it's, but, um, I don't know, I guess we were able to kind of carry that momentum and, and to make connections into the wedding industry in general. And just not because we did this lane wedding, but, um, I think that like motivated us to like, let's like start connecting with planners. now. Yeah. I would say way more. So it's the, the people in the industry, which might, might've been your question. I'm not sure, but, um, more so than connecting with slightly famous people um, is connecting with vendors, the planners and the photographers and just anyone that you admire whose work you love. Like those are the connections that make a huge difference. That's what we've kind of started to learn. Um, And I wish we learned that sooner, honestly, but it all works out in good time. But did we answer your question? <laughs> yeah, no, I was, that's like, it was about networking and collaborations. Cause I mean, that's yeah. the thing, you know, when it, and it comes to like all these, um, I guess higher end weddings and tapping yeah. into the luxury market and things, it really is like, you know, about who you, you know, and have connected with and have built trust with and, um, have those yeah. relationships. And so, um, in what ways have you kind of, you know, I guess nurtured those relationships or went out to like connect with like planners and photographers? Has it just been from like weddings that you've worked or has there any like outreach happened? Yeah. Oh, I just feel like, I feel like, um, it's just like every wedding that you do, you are making connections with like, like every single wedding you go to shoot, you're making connections with those planners and, potential future clients, you know, Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. the photographer, like, and I would sometimes expect to like work with, after doing a wedding with this, with a planner, I would expect, you know, I'd start doing a lot of weddings with them, but sometimes it's like, I'll never hear from them again, or, Mm -hmm. um, I might just work with them one time next year and that's it. Um, and I, I feel like it's, you know, there's a lot of talk of like, Oh, you go to these network events and you just, 
you know, start networking and making connections and start filming all these weddings. But I feel like it's really more difficult than that. Like it's like, it's a long game. Like, well, (laughs) people want to like really like who you are. Like they want to really be friends with you. That's the kind of person that's going to hire you and bring you back. Because people in the like plant, wedding planners and photographers want to work with people who they actually enjoy, not just somebody that they shook hands with and they're like very business savvy and they look good and stuff like that. Um, and so, yeah, I guess like um, as far as like how we're cultivating those relationships is it's like we're just trying to like have fun at the weddings we, we work. We're trying to like do a really good job. Um, we're trying to like ask the planner, ask the photographer, hey, what kind of like vertical videos can we get? Like, what do you want? Like, what can we do for you? And that's all we can really do. You know, we can't like beg them to bring us, you know, to across the world and all their travels. All we can do is really just kill it. Like take the wedding and just do a good job. And, um, it comes back to that organic growth that we just, um, we just do the best that we can and we focus and we try to put out good work. Um, yeah, that's not a very good answer, but, oh, and we have, well, just this year we've started going to, um, I went to a conference this summer and then Luke's going to go to one in December, which we have not, we've kind of like fought it for so long. I don't really know why. Yeah. We did WPPI our first year. Yeah. Like, that was the first year. And then we hadn't done any, it's so did, crazy because we did wedding wire, wire world. <laughs> oh yeah. We did do that one. Yeah. Which was, you know, everything like has a, a role, but, um, right. yeah, definitely like, okay. Try. I don't know why we waited so long. And that's the one thing that I would go back and change is that we would have started that sooner because that's networking. And that's, to me, the biggest thing was inspiration. Mm-hmm. I feel like I almost haven't slept since that event because I like lay awake with ideas. So the very first um, conference that we ever went to in Las Vegas in 2015 is the same way. Like I came back, I was like, oh my gosh, I know what my job is. And so then I guess we just let almost 10 years go by without that feeling again. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. that is, that's a big one. That's networking and that's like... Um, and it helps you find your footing, like you had said earlier. So yeah, no, yeah. I, I think that's all amazing answers, and you know something that we've talked a lot about on the podcast too. When it comes to just nurturing relationships and yeah. you know serving other vendors on the wedding day, you know we treat it as we have multiple clients on the wedding day, not just the bride and groom. Obviously, they are priority number one, but like also the planners, yeah. the photographers, so, like the DJs. Who can you serve? Who can you make relationships with? What can you do yeah. for them? Because um, I mean, as with video, obviously we have just such a unique opportunity, such a powerful yeah. opportunity to so you know, really provide so much marketing material for them um, to help them so that they could you know, possibly in turn help us. Um, so I love, I love that that's your approach to when it comes to even the, the luxury and celebrity market. Um, and then conferences, like I'm kind of ashamed to say I've never been to a conference. No no judgment here. (laughs) (laughs) It's, it's something that I've, I've wanted to do. You you know, I, I've I've thought about Mm -hmm. it and every year I just, I never do it. Um, And they're so expensive too. They are super expensive. And, um, I mean, I've done a lot of education, like I've bought courses, I've, you know, I'm, I'm in a mastermind group, so I've done a lot of things to help further my knowledge. Um, yeah, but the networking has always been so hard for me because I'm also super introverted. Um, I am like, I'd rather just curl up, just sit on the couch and, yeah, you know. Yeah. So it feels networking, I think, has a really bad um, associate, like, that's not the word association, <clears throat> and with the negative one. Um, <clears throat> people associate it with, like, trying to get something or being mm-hmm. manipulative or salesy, and um, like Luke was saying, it doesn't have to be that way. It's just, like, yeah. who who do you work well with? And that's those are the relationships that are going to blossom on their own. You don't have to force it. You don't have to be like, here's my card. You know, here's the deal I'm going to give you or, you know, anything like that. It's just, it's going to work out if you're doing your best and being yourself, it just works out. But you do kind of have to, especially if you're on your own, you do have to, you know, <laughs> I don't know, make some kind of connections. You don't have to, I guess you can do whatever you want, but it does. Yeah. It has helped us. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> right, right. I mean, it's it's hard. I mean, it's just, it's hard as an introvert because, I mean, it's something I had to learn too. I mean, going to weddings, being a filmmaker, um, you know, I would come home getting so frustrated. Like, gosh, I, just, I didn't get what I wanted because, like, I didn't speak up. I didn't – I wasn't, like, 
like assertive and and doing things I needed to do. And so it's a skill that's like, I've had to really learn. Um, But no, I feel after a wedding day. Oh, so drained. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean the like wedding hangover is one thing, but it's also just like the mental, just tiredness, like fatigue that I'm just like, I've, I I interacted with so many people. Like I don't want to talk to no one today. Like, (laughs) absolutely. So, but no, I love that. And one, one thing, one thought that I had, you know, when it comes to like celebrities and, um, you know, just the luxury market in general, and I don't know if y'all can really talk about it. Um, but like, what does like the communication process, like look like for celebrity weddings? Like, I mean, can you like, do you get to talk to the client specifically, or is it more so when you get to that level that it's just like focused on like you and the planner? Yeah, that's, it's actually very different from a typical wedding. For one, sometimes they've asked us to like, um, they'll want like all the rights to the footage, you know, they, they, mm-hmm. they can, they can say, okay, we'll ha- we'll bring you on, but we're going to need you to sign like a, you know, um, everything that gets shown, you know, yeah, yeah. it comes to us first. Um, you end up also having to sign stuff with like, if people magazine is going to cover it or other big publications, you know, we have to check our phones at the lane wedding. You weren't, you were not allowed to have a phone there. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like, um, even the guests too, like maybe there's phone checks, maybe like none of the guests even know, um, where the location is going to be till last minute. Um, there was, um, when we did, we did, uh, Taylor Lautner's wedding. Um, everything was supposed to be like secret. We weren't supposed to talk about the wedding date, the location, any of that, but there's still like a paparazzi that showed up that day and was like taking photos of like their drone and like released all the images that they took. Yeah. Thankfully there are terrible drone pilots with like <laughs> terrible drone footage, but, so um, messed up. Yeah. yeah, that got released first before we were able to like actually show any of like the photo and video we took. But, um, yeah, between, between, and, you know, and people at first are like, you know, that kind of sucks that you have to like, you, you know, give them the right to the footage, but really every client, even though like technically as filmmakers, you know, we, we own that, right. Any client can like use a privacy clause and say like, no, yeah. I don't want that shown or, yeah. or I don't want to post that. And like, even though we have a contract, it's, it'd be really hard to fight. So it's yeah, really never- kind of like not a problem for us to like give that away or whatever. Yeah. And as far as communication with them goes, usually, and it, once you reach a certain point, we're learning this as we go, but, um, a lot of higher end weddings, they just, they don't want to deal with it. That's part of why they pay the planner so much money is that they're like, I don't want to have any phone calls. Like you speak for me. So, um, it kind of, it depends on the client. Like if they're really passionate about video, which is the ideal, the dream client is someone mm-hmm. who like really wants, you know, like, oh, I'm really excited about this. Can you make this kind of real or whatever? It's a little different from client to client. But yeah, you do. And it's it's kind of bittersweet. Like, it's exciting to do these weddings. But I like knowing the clients and I like talking with them. But yeah. Yeah. yeah and um, I think with some of the different like celebrity weddings we've done, some of them we have not talked to at all up until the wedding day, yeah. which I wouldn't recommend. I, I think like yeah, our first it's, few it's we were not, too kind of like nervous, but yeah. um, and then like you take carry those nerves onto the wedding day and that's like not good. Yeah. And then the uh, um, some other ones we've done, we were able to at least hop on the phone and like chat and, but I don't know. Yeah. Um, I, I would always recommend to any, any wedding, like, like it's do so a, yeah, yeah, do a video chat, even if it's like a quick 20 minutes, Hey, just want to say hi. Um, like don't be intimidated or afraid by like who they are or what the, like, yeah. and sometimes we let the planner kind of call the shots. So we'll never end up getting to talk to the client, yeah. but in hindsight, we're realizing like, no, this kind of needs to be a mandatory thing. Like yeah. some planners think that the videographer shouldn't talk to the clients and it's kind of our job to tell the planner why that's important, you know, like. It's, it's going to help everybody. We're all going to be more comfortable with each other. Um, yeah. So that kind of thing. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, if, well, one, the phone check thing, I feel like should happen at all weddings. I, I feel like that's like one of those things is the great. biggest right <laughs> for like photographers, videographers. You see those posts online. It's like, oh, it ruined the first kiss because grandma was in the aisle or yes. you know, all those things. So yeah, that's that's interesting. And that makes a ton of sense. But then like, paparazzi with celebrities I'm, I'm sure it's just a whole different ball game of things you have to kind of deal with and and navigate um 
And yeah, I mean, the planner thing with the client, it's, that can be really nerve wracking. I mean, like you said, not having any communications with the couple at all until the wedding day. And then you're like, yeah. It, it does throw a wrench in your process because, you know, when you know the couple a lot better, it's just, it makes us more comfortable as like yeah. filmmakers being able to capture that personality and just, you know, those vulnerabilities a lot easier because we kind of know them to a degree. Um, so that's, that's interesting. That, that would be a hurdle. That would be really tough for me too. Yeah. Um, um, fortunately with like, um, a couple that like we watched them on The Bachelor. We know, we kind of know about them. Sure. So <laughs> you, you have to pretend like you don't actually. When you show up, you're right. like, "Is this your mom?" <laughs> right. <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, then, like with celebrities like you know Taylor Lautner, like you know him from movies, like Twilight's the biggest one, yeah. and you yeah. know, but you 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 know that like that's just a character they play. It's like they're so different yeah. outside of that, oh, yeah. and he is like exactly like talking to Luke. He's so nice and so like. I wish we could be best friends. That you, yeah. you guys, yeah. He's it was he made it so easy. Never felt like right. he came up to us. At, um, we filmed his sister's wedding, and he came up to us and was like, oh, "I've been so excited to meet you guys." <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> like really, that's ridiculous. But then you know, <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> it's like, hold on, can you uh, can you say that one more time for me? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Get your phone yeah. out, just so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Um, is there like a different turnaround time, like expectations when it comes to like celebrity weddings? Do you have to like sign like, a, is it different than how your process is generally for like, say just like a traditional bride and groom or. Yeah. I mean, um, especially if it's going to get uh, like published in a, you know, like yeah. any, any people magazine or any other publication, they're going to want you to get all the footage as soon as possible. So like I'm in like, you know, coming back from Nashville, like in a minivan, just like editing, stopping off at gas stations, plugging it into like <laughs> McDonald's, trying to like upload footage as fast as I can while Christina's driving, <laughs> not making me car sick. And it was just, like, oh, like, you just made us look really cool. All that, that whole, here's the truth, guys, yelling at kids, stop crying. Like, uh, <laughs> we, did, we, we actually were, he, like the laptop was dying. And so we were at like a, Arby's or something like that. And the kids and I were playing in the parking lot. <laughs> Luke was editing inside. I was like, this is very glamorous. So between like getting that out, then you're just like excited to get, we try to every client we want to get like verticals out, you know, yeah. to them as if possible. Can, it's just, yeah. it's just really hard to, so we don't make any promises yeah. to any of our clients, but we'll try to surprise them. Like, um, I guess over deliver in that way. And, um, so yeah, we're definitely going to get like any of those other weddings. Yeah, there's no expectation there's, from the client, but we're definitely going to mm, get stuff out. I would say there is an expectation. Yeah, I mean not not in a negative way, but I do think there is an expectation. Like <clears throat> that's kind of the whole reason we're there is like we want this to be shown as much and as soon as possible. So anyway, okay. yeah, we don't tell our other clients that we're like letting them cut in line. That's one of the biggest things that I was curious about too is because with like celebrity and like you're dealing with like all kinds of, you know, publications and, and things like that. Now, I mean, is obviously with that, like, like NDA or whatever you have to sign too, it's, it's like they kind of get the rights to post first. Is mm -hmm. that like kind of how it is? And then after that, y'all can post whatever you want or is there's like. Yeah, basically if they, if they post, it's like, free game for everybody free game. Not even for us. people start like screen recording that and like yeah. dropping it on tiktok and all over the place taylor Lautner has so. a lot of <laughs> a lot of like 10 year old fans or i don't know how old they are but they seem like you know obsessive a lot of foreign yeah, fans yeah. accounts yeah. anything you post like i would post something on my account and next thing you know like all the like brazilian taylor Lautner is like posting it and i'm like oh i wasn't expecting that was quick but um, yeah. yeah, so yeah, anything that's posted from the clients always fair game. And then like, I would also like message them and say, Hey, can we share yeah. this? And they'd be like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We do like get that. approval for people who are like really particular about, um, you know, their image or something like that. Now there are plenty of like photographers and videographers that do big weddings, like for celebrities that don't, sh you know, share a thing, not even a photo, no publication, you know, they're, those are much bigger high-end weddings, yeah. you know, typically, but A-list celebrities, I think are more under wraps. You'll like, you'll hear about it on Instagram. Like they were married last week or whatever. And it's like, Oh, I wonder who did those 
I wonder who was a photographer and video and you can't even like figure out who did it. So I I always think those are the, like, those people are way cooler than us because like they get to do these things that they don't even tell you. Mm -hmm. You know, I've kind of been in the, I guess is same market for years. Like I've never really expanded that reach. Um, never really knew like what's like, you know, that one thing, if there was like one thing that just like could propel me towards that. And I mean, would you, would you like say that it, it kind of has been like networking that re- has been like the one thing that just like threw you into that, that world? I think so. Yeah. You- yeah. I also think it's kind of like what you want. Like if, if you want it to, like, if you really want to do say destination weddings, like, you can't flip a switch and all of a sudden be there, but you can start doing things. Like if you're really passionate about that to like help you get there, like, um, kind of like faking it until you make it, you could find like, yeah. you know, you can go do a style shoot. We did a years ago. We did a style shoot out in like San Francisco with a photographer, friend of ours. And there's like a big florist out there and, you know, to get a bunch of content for your site and you start right. dropping on Instagram and hashtagging this. And, but you know, none of that work is worth, it was a lot of work to like, I would it wasn't say, worth it unless you're like, I want to do weddings out in San Francisco. Yeah, well, and also, I don't right. think it works if you have the connections. I really don't. Yeah. I mean, so I think, I do think that if you were to, to just narrow it down to one thing, I do think it's the networking, like you said, Jared. Yeah. I think yeah. that's what's the thing. Everyone knows that. It's who you know. That's the only way to get ahead in life. And not just the wedding industry, but any industry. It's like, yeah, yeah. you have to know people, which fortunately you can actually meet them, you know, like you mm-hmm. can actually go, but it, it's not easy though. I will say like, you know, you can reach out to a planner and be like, I love your work. I think we would work great together. Look at this thing, you know, this film that we're really proud of and never hear back from them. So, you know, yeah. it's, it is yeah. luck too. Yeah. Unfortunately, which is not something that you can. Yeah. And I, th- I think our town too, like one thing we've been fortunate about is, our town's kind of a destination town. You know, we live like Wilmington. We live like coastal North Carolina. I, even like when we're doing local weddings, so many of them are out of town. So many of them like went to school at UNC or went to school at like Duke and, and they love this area. So they're like, we want to have a destination wedding. And like, even though it's a local wedding for us, you know, to them it might be a destination wedding. Yeah. And a lot of those people will bring, you know, we might get the opportunity to film one or two of their friends from that wedding. And because it's a destination where everyone's coming from like Ohio or Pennsylvania or Texas, next thing you know, we might be getting an email to go shoot their friend's wedding in Texas. So that's kind of like one of the ways for us too, it started was, um, you know, just kind of like, I don't know, being in the right place, the right time kind of deal. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's like, if you really want a Texas wedding and it's like in February or, you know, you can give them a a different rate if you want, or you can like hop on the phone with them and say, Hey, how can we make this work? I really want to come to Texas. You know, you can, um, if you're really busy and it's May, you might be like, no, like I'm going to book that wedding. Like I'm going to charge high dollar for it out in Texas. And so it's just like, I don't know. I feel like, um, we've been fortunate in this town to, to have a lot of really cool clients that like have come our way and have some cool friends and stuff like that. So yeah, that's really cool. Now, I mean, being that we are in like 2023, I don't know if y'all have experienced this. There's like kind of like just like the 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 atmosphere of the economy and things like that. There's like just been a little bit of a decline in the industry itself, I feel like. Um, have y'all noticed any kind of like decrease like your way in terms of inquiries, like number of weddings, like things like that? Uh, it's hard to, it's hard to know just like what COVID did, you know, I think that there was definitely like this big COVID wave, a boom, like a boom right after COVID that everybody had been postponing their wedding for two, three years, maybe, I don't know, maybe one or two years. And I think that that gave a lot of false, um, Mm, impressions on a lot of, a lot of people in the industry. We were like, Whoa, we're slammed this year. And like, we're already getting inquiries for next year too. And so it's hard to know if like, it's really hard to know if it's just like false expectations from that, like COVID right. bump. is it balancing out or is it actually um, declining? And yeah. it could be that maybe less people are getting married post COVID. And because of that, there's less weddings or could it be the economy? So it is a good question. As far as us, like, um, I don't know. It's, it's hard to measure. Like we, it, uh, it's I, people in the industry have definitely said like, yeah, we're not like our whole May is open this year or whatever. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. We've, we've definitely um, seen changes. Like people are booking out not as far sure. as they used to. Um, but I think overall it's a really pause, like it's for video, especially I think the trend is very positive because we even like 10 years in, we're still almost on the early end. Like we're just starting to get appreciated as videographers. You, I'm sure you've noticed this too. Like mm-hmm. when we first started out, it was like, Oh, Video is going to be the last thing we book. And now it's not that way. Um, We're still paid a lot less than a lot of (laughs) our wonderful, very talented photographer friends. And, but that's changing too. So I think that, I think it's good and bad, even if maybe there's a decline, I don't know. But I think um, in general, video is trending up, Yeah, you know, and, and it's still, it's really hard. So there's still not a lot of videographers out there. Um, or at least compared to other vendors. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, we're still feeling like we're still feeling momentum in general is is the sense that we have. Big time. As far as like the appreciation for video goes. Yeah. And yeah, in the market, I think um, everyone has video now. So, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think, I think it's a very optimistic yeah. I think I think videographers in general are just getting started. That's how I feel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Yeah, absolutely. Me too. Um, yeah, I think in terms of just like the decline overall, I think it's just everyone's kind of feeling a little bit of decrease yeah. in Luggish. their in yeah in their bookings and like that's planners, DJs, photographers, like everyone mm-hmm. across the board. Um, yeah. yeah, and it's a great point about video. You know. It's no longer, I mean, maybe still to some degree, maybe just a little bit, but not as much seen yeah. as a luxury um, yeah. opposed to a necessity. It's, you know, yeah. we all get those clients. They're like, oh, your video is like my first, I, I booked you before the photographer. Yeah. And like, we love you. We, we like. <laughs> it brings always, tears to our eyes. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. It's amazing. We get to actually recommend a photographer. We're like, finally. Oh, no, we I know. Help somebody out. I feel so valued. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And just to transition into one of the last questions I had for you all is, uh, you know, who would you say has been kind of your biggest influence uh, and inspiration in the wedding industry? I know you're yeah, answering. well, I mean, I've always been a big fan of like Caleb from East West. I just think he does like the best films as far as like look and style. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, there's also like Jay and Mac. I mean, they're, yeah. uh, I think they're such a cool couple that like yeah. the way they work together, I feel like there's such a cooler couple than us. I'm like, Christiana, come on, we can do it. Let's get some tap. <laughs> cool. some jewelry. We're not cool. But, but um, and, and it's cool because like both those people, they do films that, that really, they're very different styles and it really represents who they are and what they believe in. And I think that's important as a filmmaker is to not try to like say, yeah. copy someone, but find out like, what is like, what are you, like, what is true to you? And like, just do that really well because you can see tons of different, wedding video styles out there that are all so good. And you can just tell mm-hmm. that they're just like tied to the maker who like, you know, yeah. mm-hmm. um, the produces on. Yeah. And so that's something that like, as a, the, for me as a filmmaker that I want our wedding films to really reflect who Christiana and I are and yes, be inspired by other filmmakers, but not try to like yeah. copy them, but try to be inspired by them. Yeah, Definitely. There's so much of this like kind of copy and paste formula. Um, I think too, it's just kind of due to the rise of, you know, social media and just like technology in general. It's like everyone's wanting to, you know, copy like someone else that's gotten a lot of followers or a lot of engagement. It's like, oh, I need to copy and paste this formula so I can get all those followers and I can do this and do that. Um, But no, I love that. It's, we did an episode like maybe four or five episodes back about originality and, um, you know, how it's so, so important to like, Yes, you can obviously take elements of, you know, things that you find inspiring from other filmmakers, but uh, the key is to really transform them into, you know, who you are as an artist and um, just take little, little things, just like the copy and paste formula. It's like, it, it, it doesn't really work. It's like a year or two years down the road, you'll look at that and you'll be like, wait, who am I? Like you, you'll have this identity crisis. You don't know who you are. And it's like, you know, instead of figuring that out early on. So no, I, I love that answer. Um, and yeah, I, I just appreciate you guys coming on. This has been such a really cool um, perspective into, 
yeah, your your transition from like small town to luxury and like celebrity weddings. It's been so cool uh, connecting with you guys. And um, if there's a place for you know the listeners to come and check you guys out and follow your work, well, where would be the best place for that? Instagram, probably. We yeah. Yeah, Instagram and MySpace for sure. Um, <laughs> well, I'm just kidding. With MySpace, but, um, so, yeah. but yeah, yeah, Instagram. Yeah. And our, and our website and just send us an email. I'm, I'm good about answering emails usually <laughs> um, <laughs> most days. Um, but yeah, we, we love to reach out to other people in the industry. So always welcome an email. Yeah. Well, awesome. Well, thank y'all again so much. And uh, um, yeah, if you're listening, be sure to uh, check uh, Luke and Christiana out at Light Canyon Films. And until next time, guys, we'll see you.